Trev and welcome to my blog. This video is all about paint run removal utilising our old friend Carl Body Filler as a helpful assistant. I hope you enjoy this video. Oh, can you hear Storm Eunice raging outside? I've made this sign up out of plywood and I've painted it with car paints and had a bit of a mishap when I painted it, ended up getting a bit of a run in it. I'll explain the situation and then I'll um, get on and remove the run. It's only been painted about an hour, so it's uh, tacked off quite nicely. It won't be until tomorrow I can actually perform the run removal, but I'll give you an overview of what's happened. I've got this recess between the two parts of the sign. I could probably just about get my finger in there. So as you can appreciate, it'd be really easy to have like a, a sandpaper dry finish in between the two parts of the sign. So I really concentrated on getting paint down in that part of the sign so that there's a nice kind of build up of paint in there. As you can see, it's nice and glossy. Now, the result of this is that the paint has built up heavy on the masking paper got heavier and heavier and then dripped off and landed on the sign itself. Really annoying, it would have been nice if it had just cleared the sign and landed on the floor, but that's not what's happened. There's the run. That's where it dripped off. You can just see, look, paint hanging off this edge, ready to drip again. This is the following day since I've painted it. So it's been painted around 24 hours. I thought I'd just discuss with you Something that I think is very important that I missed off the last run removal video. Make sure that the paint is properly cured before you try and remove that run. Otherwise, a couple of nasty things that could happen. One of the worst being that you're going to take a great big lump out. You know, the run could actually separate from the primer. The other thing that could happen is you could suffer significant gloss drop after you've polished it up. We know it's dry. Is it dry enough? Get your thumb. Put some moderate pressure on the area with your thumb and see if it leaves a print. Look, it leaves a print, which means that it's not fully cured. Now, don't worry about the thumbprint. It will just naturally ease itself back out and disappear. You can probably see it's nearly gone now. But this is a good indication to show that it isn't hard enough to sand out. The other thing you can do is if you've got a bit of a nail on your finger, is just apply some light pressure to the run. You want to just put a bit of pressure on like that and leave a little divot. You can see a little divot there. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but trust me, there's a little divot there which is indicating to me that that paint is still too soft. That divot will remove itself providing you don't press too hard. If you press too hard, you'll cut straight back through the paint and you've ruined the job then. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off the immediate surrounding areas because I am going to apply some car body filler to the surface of this and it's a messy job. I don't want it kind of landing somewhere, drying and me not noticing. And then of course I've got to try and remove the body filler from the painted surface. That sort of goes without saying really, doesn't it? I'm such a messy soul, I'll probably end up getting it all over there somehow. Just gonna mask this off. Mask right in to that corner. So I'm just gonna come over the top of the corner. Don't want it finishing directly on the corner because I don't want there to be any chance of me sanding over that. So that'll do, that's good enough. The filler that I'm going to use is Evercoat Metal Glaze. I could have used Evercoat Easy Sand, but I haven't got any of that. Uh, you could use virtually any filler that's quite a fine filler. I don't necessarily mean it's got to be really, really runny, but I mean it, it's capable of a nice fine finish. So anything like, um, I don't know, you could use U-Pole Dolphin Glaze or something like that. I mean, that's got a nice fine filler that's quite runny. 
like I say, it doesn't have to be really runny, but it gives you that advantage of getting a nice thin film thickness. This stuff's actually dried out a little bit. It's more runny than this normally, but it'll be good enough for what I want to do. As long as I can get it on there nice and fine, that's the main thing. I don't really want a massive deep build of filler on there. So I'll give that a good mix. I'm gonna just get it in the area. Don't want a really thick, thick film of it. I just want it to be quite thin. And I'll explain why in one second. So let's just get this filler on first. The point of putting the filler on is to act as a buffer around the run. It's to stop the paper that we're going to use. So we're going to use rubbing down paper now to sand the whole lot flat. And what the filler does is it acts as a barrier between the sanding paper and the area surrounding the run. I got a little block that I made out of some hardwood. Don't want anything too big for this job. Just want to do something so we keep the sanding within the very localised area. Got some water and I've got some rubbing down paper using wet and dry paper. And normally you'd be looking at things like grades of 1500, 2000, typically for polishing. But because we're blocking down filler and we want to just take the top surface off quickly, cleanly and nice straight cut. What smoother papers tend to do is follow the undulating surface whereas uh, coarser papers cut sharper. This is why typically when you're doing filler work you don't finish with anything less than about 180 because the finer you go you start losing actual straightness of the repairs. So I've got some 400 then I'm going to jump to 600, 800, I think I've got some thousand somewhere and then I'll do 15, 2000. The closer you keep the grades together, um, the less chance there is of you seeing the scratches. If you go from a really coarse paper, so say I went from 400 to 2000, 400 to 2000, you're gonna see those 400 scratches through the 2000 when you finish because that's gonna be such a difference between the two. If you keep the cl uh, grades closer together, then the next grade cancels out the one before. So let's start with a 400. Get it wet. Start sanding it down. Um, sort of try and keep away from any edges. These, these edges are deadly. You get anywhere near them, you just sand straight through, straight to the primer, and then you'll have to do it again. So let's just start blocking that first. See straight away, you can see the very peak of the run is poking through there, well and truly now. Just keep going. Got quite a lot of residue building up around the sanding area now. These are quite useful, like a little 3M squeegee block. You can just give it a wipe down, clean it. The other thing that's really useful is a cellulose decorator sponge. In this greatly sped up clip, you can see how the run is poking through the filler as I'm sanding the filler down. And you can also see how the filler is acting as a good barrier to the surrounding paintwork around the run, ensuring that only the run actually gets sanded down until you finally get to a stage where where the run was is at the same height as the surrounding paint. And then you can switch to the 1500 grade, the 2000 grade, as you're just breaking through the filler, some of the filler you'll be able to scratch off your thumbnail, no problem. And then at the end of that, then I then polish it further with a 3000 grit Trizac disc and a 6000 grit Trizac disc. 
You see that little divot just there? If I can point to it. There, look, there's a tiny little one there and there. And that's exactly where the run was. It was down there and ended about there. So if I go over that, yeah, you can see that the runs as flat as the surrounding paintwork. See, it's perfectly flat. Get the pad a bit damp. I'm using some green top 3M. So now we're focused on the reflection so we can see the strip light. And as you can see, again, there's no evidence of the run. You can just see the little divot on the right hand side just to signify where it was. It's completely gone. So, complete success. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something from that. And um, I will see you in the next video. I'll have to swap hands because I'm holding the camera this time. So I will say, until next time. Bye for now.